Hi, I'm Imran Laka, the founder of Options Insight. I used to be a trader for 20 years, trading for investment banks in options markets and also on the buy side. Now I run Options Insight, which is a training company where I teach people how to trade options and manage their risks. So as opposed to just going short outright, using options is a really common strategy um, to get a hedge on your book or to speculate on, on an asset going lower. I guess you've all heard of just buying puts, but it's not always optimal to just buy a load of premium and spend a load of premium on puts to play downside in a stock, because sometimes those puts can be really expensive. Uh, and the SKU, which is an options sort of terminology, exists because there's a lot of demand for downside puts and downside protection. So depending on the market conditions, there may be alternative strategies that you can employ to achieve the same result, get short and underlying, protect your book or speculate on the downside on an asset, but it will be more efficient in terms of the option pricing and you won't just spend premium blindly and most likely lose money. One of the common alternatives to buying puts is put spreads. So the implied volatility is a measure that you look at in options and you, that kind of gives you a gauge on how expensive or cheap options are. And therefore, if options are expensive, you might think, I don't want to just spend premium and buy this expensive volatility and this expensive option, but I still want to play the downside in the stock. So the way you do that is by a put spread where you buy a put strike, maybe struck 10% out of the money, but then you might sell a put further out of the money to get some premium back. So that's a way of cheapening the structure, spending less premium, still being bearish on the name, getting benefit from the name going down, but not being so exposed to volatility and time decay, which are obviously the things that hurt options. So when buying a put spread, one of the pushbacks might be that you think the stock actually could go all the way down to zero. You've done your work on the name, you're trying to identify a potential fraud. So why am I going to limit the amount of money I can make on the downside? And that's a really valid point. But the idea is that you don't have to stay short that put forever. So what can happen is the volatility might be elevated or you might have identified a short trade and you put the put spread on because that allows you to carry the position for longer. And what can happen is as your conviction grows in the market, as your conviction grows that this is a good short trade and a good bearish bet, you can cover that short leg through the passage of time. Because what that's doing, that short leg is allowing you to stay in the trade, stay bearish, not pay too much time decay. And remember, you're short that out of the money put on a really quite expensive volatility. And that thing is decaying quite fast. So you might put on a six month put spread, but after three months, you might decide to buy back the short leg of that put spread. So that now you're just left with a three month put that you've partially funded by that extra short leg. Right. So that's the psychology about why you might do a spread because it buys you a bit of time. It carries better and, and it allows you to manage that. So you don't have to get your timing bang on. And, and another thing you might do if you don't like the idea of selling that lower strike put, because let's say the market just rolls over quickly and you'll be annoyed that you didn't capitalize on that is, OK, don't sell that downside put, sell an upside call instead. Right. So that's what we call a risk reversal or a collar trade. Again, it's a way of funding your put protection or your, your view that the stock's going down, but you fund it with premium to the upside because you don't see the stock reaching a certain level on the upside. So when you're getting into a collar trade as a way of getting bearish on the stock, you, you, need, to re, you need to figure out, does the skew make sense? Like, is the skew steep? Is the skew flat? If the skew's too steep, then those upside calls that you'll be selling will be on a relatively low vol, and therefore they might not be worth selling. Or to get the premium that you require, you might need to sell a call option that's quite close to the money, which will make it a more risky proposition. So you kind of need to check out the measures of SKU, see where the SKU has been, see where the SKU can go. And that will kind of help determine whether it makes sense for you to do that risk reversal trade. Um, and then also you need to be aware of the market positioning and the dynamics. Are you talking about a meme stock? Are you talking about a stock where there's a load of call buying activity where if the stock starts to run higher, then there's going to be a short squeeze and there's going to be a real kind of vol bid that hits the market because there's so many option buyers out there and dealers get caught short. So you want to try and stay away from names where that can happen and be aware of that risk. And if that risk is there, 
you might want to wait for vol to really explode through the roof before you then have the appetite to come in and sell those calls because you can't, just like momentum in stocks, you need to keep an eye on the momentum in vol. Vol can catch quite a lot of momentum as well. And you want to see that momentum in vol get a bit exhausted before you get comfortable coming in and selling those calls. So another structure that is quite interesting to play the downside is what we call a put back spread. And what that is, is where you sell a put that's relatively close to the money, maybe only 5% out of the money. And then you buy multiple puts struck quite far out of the money, maybe 15, 20% out of the money. And you do it such that you end up spending no premium. So relatively zero cost, flat premium put ratio where you are long the deep, deep downside strike. And the reason for doing that is to say, well, I don't know when the crash is coming. But what I do know is when this stock decides to go down, it's got a ton of downside, right? So in the meantime, while I'm waiting for this stock and it's going nowhere or maybe even going higher, I've not actually ended up committing any premium. I haven't spent any premium. So between now and the expiry of that structure, I'm not going to lose a lot of money. But if my view starts to materialize, and the stock starts to go down, I believe it's going to accelerate. I think we're going to head down towards those long option strikes that I've got, and the implied vol is going to explode. I'm going to kick into a load of Greeks, and that could make potentially quite a lot of money. So it's a skew trade. You would do that trade when the skew is not too expensive, so that there's opportunity there to own those deep downsides at a vol level that's quite cheap and has lots of potential to explode. So with these put back spreads, you've got to be careful to not go too short dated with the expiry that you choose. And that's because imagine you sold a 5% out of the money put and you bought a 20% out of the money put and you bought three or four of those. And then over the next few weeks, we did trade lower, but we never quite made it to your long strike puts. So they never really picked up any value. And yet you've gone through your put strike that you're short and that can be quite costly and quite painful. So with these with these type of trades where you're playing the Greeks and you're playing the idea that we're going to go down there, the Greeks are going to explode and I'm going to monetize by the fact that the optionality that I hold goes up in value, you need to make sure you have enough, enough maturity on those options, right? You have enough time on those options. And so you'd be going three, six months, maybe even 12 months out. So to make sure that when the, when the sell-off comes, that those options have still got some meat on them and, and that's what you're going to make your money out of. And then the last one that people use a lot to express short views are put spread collars. And this is perfect for a high vol asset. When you, when you have a case, and the meme stocks are a good example here, when something squeezes really hard and the vol squeezes with it, then a way to play the downside is to sell calls and buy put spreads. So you're a net seller of volatility, you're a net seller of options, but you're putting on a bearish structure to benefit from the market coming back down. And when the vol's really high, your break evens can look amazing, right? You can have maybe being short a 20, 30% out of the money call, and you can buy a put spread that's actually relatively close to the money and has quite a high probability of maxing out when, when the asset finally does come back down, right? So it's a structure that I've used quite a bit to express bearish views on names like AMC, that have squeezed really hard, the vol squeezed with them, I don't mind getting short the stock at $70 or something like that. So that's a call strike that I might choose to be short. And whatever premium I can get from that, I will spend that premium on a put spread, something like the 40, 25 put spread or something like that. And that can be relatively close to zero cost and a nice way of expressing the short, in my opinion. Now, obviously, selling a call on a meme stock can be a dangerous game. So the way, the way I do it, being someone who's traded this stuff for 20 years and had my fair share of pain uh, on the PL front as well. You, you, you learn to limit your losses. So you might think a structure makes a lot of sense and you like the break evens and you like the structure, but when it starts to go wrong, you've got to be honest with yourself and you've got to limit the amount that you're going to lose, right? The problem with selling naked optionality is that it's unlimited losses. So I like to give myself a stop on any naked options that I sell, calls, for example, I like to say, if this thing doubles in premium, then I'm cutting it. Or if it triples, whatever it is, whatever is the loss that you're comfortable taking in the size that you trade, I'd say, give yourself that mental stop and say, if this thing multiplies by X against me, I'm cutting it, I'm nipping it in the bud because that's how you manage risk, right? The key to this game is understanding how to manage risk, 
try to put on trades that make a lot of sense, that have good risk rewards. But when it goes against you, you've got to manage that risk and you've got to limit that risk. 